This is the May 10th, 2018 Water and Sewer Advisory Committee meeting for the City of Jacksonville. Hello, everybody. I call the meeting to order. First thing we need to do is adopt this agenda for tonight. Would anybody like to make a motion to adopt this agenda? Make a motion we adopt it. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're going to adopt that agenda. We need to approve the meetings from the last meeting, which was February 8th. Make a motion to approve that meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next thing we have is Deanna, who is going to talk to us about the capital improvement plan. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so tonight I'm going to um, talk about what a capital improvement plan is and kind of an overview talk about some of the impacts that um, DOT projects are going to have on some city infrastructure, talk about some of our ongoing programs, focus on FY19 projects, which uh, those are the projects that are going to be funded, and then talk about some future projects that we've added um, this time around for the CIP. So just as a reminder, we talk about CIP. CIP is our capital improvement plan. And these are major non-reoccurring investments that usually exceed $50,000 in cost require more than 12 months to complete, and have a useful life of more than five years. And I would like to point out that in looking at the projects, what we also look at is we look at the needs in, um, of our existing infrastructure, maintenance, et cetera, and then those needs are geared around our water and sewer models, like where is growth happening? And so some of the projects that we're going to talk about is going to focus on those as well. And so the capital improvement plan is also a financial planning document. It allows us to show our estimated expenditures as well as identify probable sources of financing. And it provides accountability and transparency for our citizens and staff. It helps evaluate, prioritize, and schedule our projects. And then again, communicates the ongoing um, and long-term projects, um, as you will see. So some new things that happened this year. So um, we've actually expanded the planning years from five years to 10 years, and that was in part because of the system development fees, which Wally's going to talk about in a little bit later. We also added new classification labels as a result of that, um, the system development fees. We also added NCDOT projects, and as you'll see, their projects are going to have an impact on our, our infrastructure, and so we need to plan accordingly. And we changed um, our sidewalk, annual sidewalk projects to changed it to pedestrian improvements. And that better defines what we envision doing. With, rather than just sidewalks, we'll be doing trails and greenway ex extensions as well. So just as a reminder, um, so our wastewater system components, we've got our collection system is comprised of over 230 miles of sewer, 46 pump stations, over 42 miles of force mains. And then um, all of that is collected and sent out to our wastewater Land, app, land treatment site and where we treat nine MGDs or a million gallons per day. Um, and then also, for, as you'll see later on, that the Camp Lejeune also has a treatment plant and their capacity. Um, is that availability or total? That's what's available to the city. Available to the city is um, one MGD. All right, so let's talk about some NCDOT projects. And these are just highlights. Um, I, we don't have very specifics. We're looking at it more for just how it might potentially impact the city's infrastructure. So this first project is Western and Gateway. You'll see that they're adding some turn lanes. Right now, they've got right-of-way scheduled for this year, construction next year. Um, and so the potential impact for utilities is around $167,000. And the, none of these projects up until this year were even identified in the CIP. So it does have a financial impact to the city. The next project is the Gum Branch widening. They're widening Gum Branch from Somersill School all the way out to Richlands. Right of way is um, underway currently. Construction is anticipated next year. And um, as of now, we're potential relocation costs of 108,000. And I, I would like to clarify, when we talk about relocation utilities, really right now, these are um, rough guesses. So we have an idea of where our inf existing infrastructure is going to potentially impact their new project. And in those areas and those areas only, we're looking at relocating. We're not actually re actually looking at relocating all of our infrastructure. But at this point, we don't have enough detailed plans to really understand the ramifications of what it might happen. And so the thought process was, let's go ahead and add it in the CIP. And as the plans get refined, we can take it back to council and the numbers will either go up or down. 
Would you explain to people who may not know why we have to worry about going all the way to Richlands? Um, yes. So we... You want me to do it? Go ahead. Okay. So the reason that we're concerned about this project is the city does have <coughs> infrastructure that goes down Gum Ranch Road. We actually have a 16-inch water main that goes all the way to Rock Creek. So while we don't go all the way to Richlands with infrastructure, we do have wells, Black Creek wells, and a booster station um, at Gum Branch Central, which is right beside Rock Creek. So we have a large 16-inch water main all the way down Gum Branch Road. Um, the next intersection improvement is Western and Gum Branch. Um, again, you'll see they're adding some turn lanes for connectivity. Right of ways under actually should be already done because construction, I think we just, um, they let the contract, so that construction project should be starting soon. Um, and the potential cost to relocate utilities was 162000 But um, at the time that we actually identified this cost, we actually that was the cost, but we were able to find um, either existing easements or we could demonstrate prior rights. And per that um, DOT's policy, we were able to get that cost down in ha almost half. Um, and so we were able to save the city some money. Before you move from that. Yep. And to add one other thing, just for people that may have traveled in that area recently and seen the city out working, we actually installed a valve um, on our 16-inch main coming in because when this work happens, they're going to have to cut water to certain sections in order to relocate the utilities. And if we had not installed that valve, we would have taken um, water service out to that entire intersection. So when you do the, the water turnoffs, are you going to be notifying people like a 24 hours or a week or how in advance will they know that they're not going to be having the water? Uh, we will notify them with in plenty of time, but I think with that valve, we should be able to keep everybody in service. Most everybody. There may be some businesses uh, that are temporarily out around the Lowe's area, but I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so another intersection improvement is that <coughs> Marine and Gum Branch right of way is happening this year. Construction is estimated in 2020, and right now we're looking at an estimated cost of impact of 216000 Then we've got the 258 Super Street, and that is um, creating a Super Street at 253 and 258 all the way to Pony Farm. Um, it is a very large project. Um, they're looking at right-of-way in 2018 with con possible construction in 2021. So in this, again, it goes back to we estimated the cost based on, you know, we're looking treetop looking down at $2.8 million. We are in constantly working with DOT to finesse the number to really look at and understand the true impact. So we are very hopeful that that number is going to come down, but we do have infrastructure that goes out to, um, to Burton Park. We actually have infrastructure that goes all the way down to Catherine Lake. Catherine Lake. Yeah. Is there any reimbursement for this cost coming from where is this on us? No, nope, this is on us. Unfortunately, okay. there is basically <clears throat> legislation that says if you're a municipality over, is it 10000 or 25000 I don't remember the number. I can get you that. But <coughs> I think it's 25000 But if you're over that number in population, then you get no reimbursement. Okay. You, you are responsible. Now, that said, if DOT expands their right-of-way and takes in an existing easement that we already have, then we are not required to pay for that relocation because we were there first, so we have prior rights. Uh, that said, in where this line's been in the ground, or Grum Branch may be a great example, where we've had infrastructure in there for years, and DOT may have already expanded onto our easement, so, such now that we're under a roadway where we weren't before, there is, there is potential that we could... Um, recover that cost or have DOT pay for that, but we've got to prove it. We've got to we've got to be able to produce the documentation that says we were in fact there first. So if we're there first, then DOT is responsible for it. But if we've put something in DOT's right away, we are always responsible for relocating. I got a question, Wally. And this two point eight million is that coming from the city? It That's would. City yes, money. sir. That would be. 
total the responsibility totally on the city unless we can prove that there are segments that we were already there we were pre-existing okay now you've got down there 2.8 million dollars you're not going to start until 2021 what's going to happen with inflation you know it's going to go up more than that is uh, that already made into the 2.8 million no those are in today's dollars and those figures are actually generated using dot's um numbers they have software that actually does this estimating as they're developing their project so they kind of show us tentatively where they think conflicts will be so that and then they change. give us money mm -hmm. that, that, that will change then somewhat yes it could change and like i or like deanna said if if we can show that we had an existing easement then that portion gets backed out so like in the gum branch lowe's food area um we had an easement that was existing. They're expanding their right away on top of our easement. So D DOT was actually responsible for that portion of the cost. Now there is a portion of that project where, you know, we are in DOT's right of way. They were there, you know, it was their right of way first. Matter of fact, um, we actually just laid the lines for a well in Deerfield back in 2007 or eight. So, Obviously, Gum Branch Road was there prior to 2007 or 8. So if there was any conflict with that line, we would be responsible for moving it and, and the cost associated therewith. And the other thing I'll add um, is these are not land, lines we were planning to go out and replace. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, we're not going out and replacing these lines with new lines. We're going out and adjusting these lines. We're... You know, we may take them below drainage structures that DOT has to put in. In some cases, we may be getting out of the roadway completely. So, you know, I, I guess what I'll say is this is not maintenance activities that we would have otherwise been planning. So this does impact other projects that we may would have been able to fund. Let me ask this then. To, <clears throat> it may not be the right time to, but... We have talked about putting a 36-inch sewer line from Burton Park. Yes, sir. Would it not be some way possible to add that right there while you're doing construction? Not not to go, you know, all the way out, but just through that intersection for uh, to save, you know. I, it, that portion is already designed, and it was designed with this project in mind. Oh, and nice. we have, <laughs> um, but... Either way, we would have to jack and bore that crossing anyway. It's a perpendicular crossing. Um, there may be some impacts on the, I don't know if this is going to work, but on this this side um, that we have to deal with. But, you know, I don't, I don't know that it's worth us going out there and bearing, you know, bearing the cost of that work now just yeah. to be ahead of their project. Because, I mean, it was mostly a jack and bore across that roadway anyway we may have to extend the length slightly or something like that or just the the pits but with so many of these projects in the future why is all of it budgeted in 19 just for ease Be, these um when we uh move forward with an agreement with dot <coughs> the money has to be in place for us to sign the agreement because we are committing so if they bring us the agreement for this project in 2021, in 2020, we have to have the money available in 2020. Um, so if we, they have a project that we're signing the agreement on for next fiscal year, that would mean that we would have to have the money in place this fiscal year, or in, uh, encumbered would be the correct term. So. So basically, to cover this, you're going to have to look at CIP and slide some of them back? We've already adjusted. So that, that's yes. where it's coming from? Yes, sir. Okay. And I would say that the projects that we have identified in the CIP, they're not all the DOT projects. There's more that we're working on. We just, at the time that we put the CIP together, we didn't have estimates on those yet. So we're continually working on that. So going back to what I was saying before, for this particular project, we, at the time we were looking at the plans, we didn't have enough information to really understand exactly where the, the single point of conflicts would be. And so to make sure that we had enough money to cover the project, 
we took up almost the entire length of the project and back off a certain percent just so we knew that the city wouldn't be um, caught off guard when we had to say we needed let's say you know a million dollars that at least we we had something identified and so this is like a placeholder once we get the um, the first agreement we're going to get is the municipal agreement and that kind of sets the stage the to set to um, appropriate or, or encumber the funds and then we'll get a utility agreement that will follow that and that is actually a result of the bid documents itself from DOT so we have a much better idea of what the estimates going to be so it gets refined this was our initial pass at a 30% review and then as the designs get finalized the number in, in theory should come down because we're getting a lot more specific information and to add to that I think in next year when we go through this process and we're talking about the CIV you will probably see eight or ten more DOT projects mm -hmm. in the next couple of years because yeah. you know we are having an infusion of DOT um, not just money but projects that are moving forward very rapidly which is a good thing but it does have impact as you can see to the city's water and sewer system um, and then we've got the commerce drive extension and that's taking the um, commerce drive and extending it to piney green and right now we've got a right-of-way in this year construction in 2020 and we've got an estimated cost of 453,000 to relocate utilities and I think we just got an email that they're at 60% plans so the project's moving quite along all right so now we're going to move on to our ongoing programs and these are the programs that we have in our project in our CIP that are more maintenance related so um, you'll see under the well rehabilitation projects we've set this up as a recurring project every two years and it allows us to kind of um, streamline or, or streamline our expenditures and we can start identifying some of our wells on a um, more um, annual ba or ongoing basis. And so we've set, set aside $250,000 um, in 2024, 26, and 28. Um, and so um, that will allow us to bring those some of the older wells back up to today's standards um, to give them some more useful life. Then as you all are very familiar with, we have our ongoing inflow and infiltration projects. And basically that means that we're reducing the infiltration of groundwater and reducing um, the inflow of stormwater. So we've got, it's normally followed, um, we've got the first year that we identify where we're going to go, what areas we're going to try to repair, and then followed by construction. And so um, we have been very successful in identifying areas that we've done the cured in place lining. Um, and that has been um, a very a very worthwhile project then we've got our annual water and sewer rehab projects and this is where we look at identifying aging infrastructure we there are areas that we know we have issues it's also areas where that we've identified that we're going to go pave the street and so before we put new asphalt we actually want to make sure the infrastructure is in good good condition and so that's where these projects are identified and it allows us again the whole point is to flatline our expenditures so we can anticipate how much money we're spending on, on um, uh, maintenance projects and I would say that as we identify some of these areas if the if it is something that we can end up lining we actually move that project over to the um, lining side of the house rather than water and sewer and it allows us some flexibility in how we spend some of the money all right so let's talk about the projects that we anticipate doing this coming year one project is the Bryn Mawr force main relocation project um, right now the project's schedule, scheduled to start this year and uh, before we actually get started though we're going to do some planning so what this is um, we're looking at the possibility of putting um, um, uh, putting in the Bryn Mawr force main and so we've got to identify and study some alternatives look at some cost benefit analysis um, I think we had previously told council and I think this group that we were going to bring the information back um, for additional follow-up before we actually start engineering and so that's something that we're starting um, like I said this year and so here is um, there's the Bryn Mawr and the um, advantage is we're trying to look at whether or not if we relocate it that we can um, the force main that we can take it and relocate it to Camp Lejeune and as I stated before in the previous slide they have some availability if we're able to relocate it that frees up capacity in our system and so obviously there's some things that we would need to work out other than if it's even feasible or is it the cost benefit analysis we have to get agreements with the Marine Corps base etc but that would allow us um, to free up needs on our side of the houses on our system as well as um, the capacity to continue growing 
And so um, I think there was two options. The first option, um, there one, then so there's one option to go down um, to Piney Green Road, down the system that we had, and all the way from <coughs> Wassa to the base. And then the other option is that we take it um, down Lejeune Boulevard, the NC24 alternative. And so both of these analyses will be um, evaluating and bringing back probably um, middle of next year. Am I overstating? Okay. And before, <laughs> before you move on, um, one of the things that I'll point out with this project is, you know, this does redirect about 1.1 million gallons per day. And I know you saw the um, WASAC report, the Water and Sewer Advisory report that we send out um, every month. And if you noticed that we're very close to Freeport, literally one, one heavy rainfall away from having to go into emergency spraying. I mean, that's, that's literally where we sit. Um, part of the challenge with that is if we go into emergency spraying, or even if we're able to, you know, we do have some pretty weather and we don't have to go into emergency spraying, we have to spend the majority of the summer catching back up so that we are prepared when the winter gets here. Well, one of the things that that does is keeps our fields in constant utilization. And as you know, we are still working on trying to catch up where we should have been on our forestry management. So one of the advantage of this project is we would be essentially diverting about one sixth of the average daily flow away from the plant. And you know, while we fully expect that over time we will recover that flow, it does it buys us time. It gives it's us time to do space. things in the field that we don't necessarily have time to do now. Um, so that's just one, while we've got advantages, that's one of the things that I wanted to point out that, you know, it will, it, you know, while we're not near our capacity now, we do struggle with our storage. And ultimately we struggle with our storage because we have to get it into our field in order to relieve the storage. So it's not finally treated and out of our system until we've applied it to the land. So that is one of the other advantages to this. And while I know we didn't write that in there, I did want to share that with this board because this board has been um, keeping up with our efforts in the forestry management program at LTS. Sorry. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, so we're working on is the new bridge, new bridge street infrastructure project. And so this project is evaluating the infrastructure um, of four blocks on new bridge. So from Warlick all the way to the Freedom Fountain. Um, and so what we've done so far is we've conducted water and sewer evaluations. We uh, have a, topogra a topographic survey. We've done a stormwater evaluation. And right now the design and construction is to begin this coming fiscal year. And so what did we find? So the sewer system, we found that the lines are actually structurally in good condition. And so what does that mean? That means we can line them and we don't have to line them now, we can line them at a later date. And so that gives us some breathing room. And so overall, this was some great news on the sewer side. Unfortunately, what we found on the water side is the water lines are old and they have some failures. And so we know this, that, um, that some of the valves are leaking and we've got history of maintenance. And so as a result, all the lines have to be replaced. And with that, we're gonna either be moving or adding hydrants in the ball belt area to allow for um, greater fire coverage in the event that it's needed. And so, um, like I said, wasn't the best news, but it's stuff that we can incorporate into our design. Isn't that one of the oldest parts of the city? Those would be really old lines, wouldn't they? Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly the dates of, but it is. That, that is Those an are, older yeah, section. that's the older section. Um, and so you might have seen some improvements that we've already done along New Bridge. And so this is the sidewalk pattern that we're going to be putting back on these four blocks as part of this project. So when we go in and we do the infrastructure, the, we, we're going to replace the water line, which means we have to replace all the services, all the businesses are connected to the new water line. Um, we're going to be upsizing the storm drainage system. Um, with this as well so there's going to be quite a lot of work to be done and if there's going to be some coordination because we want underground power and all the utilities etc and so while all this is happening we're going to put something we're going to 
put back new sidewalk and the sidewalk pattern is what's shown here. Um, our intent is not to necessarily change the grade of the road and so we're going to be making up for to, to ensure ADA compliance that you'll see on the side where we've got the, the utility strip which is the brick and you'll notice that it's kind of steep and that's intentional that's how we're making up the grade slope difference so um, as pedestrians are walking down the sidewalk that it does meet ADA standards before you move on um, because I feel like I'm channeling mr. nickel who unfortunately couldn't be here I'll go ahead and answer the question that you would ask and that is that the water and sewer fund will only fund the water and sewer portions of this project we're not so, contributing to those cute street lamps that's right yes so and we we all know that that would be one of the questions oh, that yes, he would, would ask so I, I'm channeling mr. nickel and I wanted to share that um, and so here's some conceptual of what the street concept would look like after we're done. So we'll be reducing the, the um, travel lanes from four to two. So as you can see, we've got some bulb outs, we've got um, some, um, some striped parking in the middle, and that's to allow for deliveries so that the trucks can park in the middle, unload. The parking's still going to be angled parking. We're adding some uh, pedestrian crosswalks, mid-block crossings, and we've got it um, down. So you're going to lose the turning lane. Yes. Yep. And the, the idea behind the, the hatched area for deliveries and other things is people will also make U-turns in that area so that it's, you know, if there they need to park on the opposite side. There is a delivery on those streets. There are. I live right now, there. they, yeah. right now, if you they watch UPS right or FedEx, their, they stop in the right-hand yeah, lane yeah. and block traffic. You got it. They put their emergencies on and they just do what they ever they do. They do. Jim? Well, is there going to be a two lanes in each direction because part of it looks like you're only going to be able to get one with the cars part it'll of be it. one lane in either direction so you would instead of have two lanes in each direction it would be one lane in each direction with the center median okay so it would it would be reduced down to one lane you're going to have and at least that, enforce that so they stop pulling up in the right lane and just putting their emergency first. I'd have to talk to the police department. I don't have the authority. <laughs> a nice big sign so they understand what they're supposed to do. Yes. Okay. And then we they just continue. Read they read tickets. <laughs> I, before you go on, um, one thing, the reason the lane looks wider than one lane in either direction is that there is room behind the parking to allow for a car to partially back out. So that that's why the lane is wider than mm -hmm. tip, your typical one lane. It also allows for bicycles to go through that area. And then with this, we're just extending the same streetscape concept all the way up to free, the Freedom Fountain. And um, I would say, kind of going before we move on to the next project, that right now, the, this particular project, other than just the water and sewer funds, this project has a total of five funding sources. So we've got stormwater, we've got um, general fund, we've got power bill. So there's multiple sources of funding. The city's also looking at um, some potential grants. We've been working with the utility contractors um, to minimize costs. And so um, we have made um, a lot of effort in trying to identify how best to, to move forward with this project. As of right now, we're executing the contract for full design. At about 60% uh, design is when we'll take it back before um, city council to make the determination on how to move forward the project. Do we move forward as one large project or do we move it forward in some type of a phased approach? And so as of right now, we haven't officially made that determination on how to actually um, construct this project. So um, a new project for us would be the Decatur lift station elimination. And so we're looking at the possibility of eliminating the, the lift station itself and adding um, a new 1,700 linear feet of 15-inch sanitary sewer to connect down to the Brookview outfall. And so this is... Um, before we actually make the determination, we are doing an analysis to see if this is even feasible. If it's determined that it's not feasible, then the desire would be that we need a larger wet well um, and make some improvements to the pump station. And so um, this is also very similar to the other project where we're looking at two different options to see what's going to be best for the city. The Holiday City Mobile Home Park lift station. Um, so. The whole purpose of this project is we really need to reduce the, the inflow and infiltration that the Holiday City Mobile Home Park takes into 
the um, lift station. And so what makes this a little different is that we have it's we have public infrastructure that flows into a private system that it discharges into a public um, lift station. And so we have been look, working with the owners of the Holiday City to try to identify and reduce their I&I. &I. Um, and uh, we looked at trying to partnering. We looked at maybe con actually constructing a new public sanitary sewer system in that whole area. Unfortunately, the cost was very large. And, and so the property owner has now hired an independent company to do their own independent analysis of their I, &I efforts. And so as a result, we're back to the original scope of the project where we're just going to identify um, constructing a larger wet well for the lift station. And so that's, we're back to square one. Um, but we are working, um, the city manager and the owner of Holiday City have been in communication as well as with Greg, the senior civil engineer, to um, try to identify where it's happening and how they can fix it. And then we've got the US 17 North Drummer Kellum Water and Sewer Project. And um, this is a developer-driven project. It's been in the CIP for a number of years. We're, ready, we're basically have identified an estimate and we're waiting for the developer to tell us he's ready to go. And so we don't want to we don't want to spend any money until we know for sure the project's gonna happen. So the project involves the extension of water and sewer along US 17 North to near Drummer Kellum Road. So as soon as the developer tells us he's ready, then we'll start with this first phase to provide service to this area. Um, I would say that uh, the, what we're doing is we're, we, we have established this area um, as a service area assessment. And so in essence, the city fronts the money. And as the area is developed, those, um, they will pay an extra fee. In addition to the system development fee, they're also going to pay a service service area assessment fee to offset the expenditures related to this particular project. I have a question. Since that area is not currently in the, the county ETJ, is there a reason why the developer is not talking to Onwasa about doing the services through them? Because oh, do they have... They don't have sewer. They don't have the sewer. Well, right now we don't have the sewer either. Well, they don't have sewer anywhere in the general vicinity. So we're the closer of the two. Absolutely. Okay. Is it going to get annexed? Uh, yes, it would be annexed. Sorry, in, annexed. Sorry, annexed. Sorry, annexed. In the city? Mm -hmm. Sorry, annexed. Okay. Yeah, it, it is part of the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this a spot annexation or continuous? Uh, it is not contiguous. So this would be spot, but it's the initial area is not large. It's a. It would be. Right now, it's one track of land that they would subdivide into multiple multiple tracks, uh, but you know it wouldn't. It does not fairly impact the percentage of contiguous uh, satellite annex section that we could have. We've got the emergency interconnection project. This project too has been in the CIP for a number of years. Um, it is a de project designed by the Marine Corps base. And it's um, funded in part by the Marine Corps base. We have received the agreement, and we're working on um, negotiations and finalizing. And once we get that signed, then that project will, will happen. And, and basically, it allows the two water systems to be connected. In the event that there's an emergency, we can go in and turn a valve, and the water can flow um, either from us to the base or the base to us. We've got the Black Creek raw water wells. Um, and this was it's, this is the installation of three water wells, um, and it really is. We're, we've been waiting on this project for a number of years, and, and it's because we're hoping to forego the last reduction in the Black Creek. What is it? The CC okay. the Coastal <laughs> Capacity Use Development Area. There you go. <laughs> coastal Capacity Use. There's P in there somewhere. Coastal Plains capacity. So anyway, but yeah, not to, to confuse everybody, but um, so yes, yeah, so we're hoping that we can forego that last reduction. And so as a result, we're kind of waiting. Um, and we've, we've got some results of some monitoring wells that we did at Burton, Burton Park that we're waiting to do that final report on. We've been working with the state on those results as well. And so we're very hopeful that we will forego it. But if we, unfortunately we're not able to do that, then we're ready to uh, identify and construct um, the three water wells and the conveyance of, of those wells. The state has actually released their draft report for the 2018 uh, reduction. Mm -hmm. And as expected, they basically said, unless you have a modified permit, then you will have to take the reduction. So 
Um, if we can submit our monitoring well data and then the analysis that we've completed and they review and agree to it, we can get a modified permit to um, not have to take that last reduction, but we will just have to wait and see what the state um, determines. And Dr. Sproul is, uh, as part of uh, Groundwater Management Associates, whom we had here, I think, two meetings ago, is submitting that on behalf of the city. And he's actually recommending through the results that we should not have to, to take that last reduction, but the state makes the ultimate determination. But for those uh, keeping up with it, this draft report basically says that anybody that does not have that modified permit will have to take the, the last reduction. And it's a, um, and I will add that that permit, that modified permit, they deem as temporary. So you have to continually submit data saying that you do not have to, to suffer that reduction. So it's not a, you do it one time and you're, you know, you're scot-free. It is a continual re a year? review. I don't know if they'll do it yearly. We had they haven't said how often they will do it, mm -hmm. but we do have to renew our permit yearly, so right. that would make sense. Okay. Well, yes, sir. on that, those three wells in Black Creek is going to be city wells. That's correct. Have they changed the formula about how much we can draw out of there? I know. Well, that's um, they have. Um, they basically said that if we don't change our permit, that or if they don't agree to a modified permit, then yes, we have to take that reduction. Because I believe on Wass is pulling a little bit, but you know, put in are, a couple wells down there too. They will be um, in, when we. <coughs> I, Dr. Sproul did his work on a, as a joint effort between the city and Onwasa, because we are both in the same aquifer, mm -hmm. very close geographically. So we're 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 essentially you know, pulling from the same place. So we could not go and get um, a temporary permit without them being able to do the same thing. So if one of us has to take the reduction, we're probably both going to have to take the reduction. Well, I mean, will where these three wells make up for, the, what was it, a million gallons that we were losing every quarter, no, every, so every five years? Those wells um, are really designed to help spread our well field out. We have... Um, our wells in the Black Creek are older, yeah. um, you know, many of them constructed in the 60s and 70s. And we have a, it's actually called Wells Road off of 258. And we, we, we literally have wells one through five down Wells Road. So we have five wells in a straight line down one road. The idea behind this is to spread where we're drawing from or withdrawing from the aquifer, um, further geographically so we have less in it of an impact okay so what is the black creek regenerating their water i mean the the report the draft report actually found that the uh black creek is um that it that the water is replenishing however the concern is saltwater intrusion because in the where we are in the transition zone as they call it which means the bottom layer um, is salty and the upper layer is fresh if you even though it's replenishing you can have a change in the salt or chloride concentrations so while it is it's it's not just yes the the situation is better. Yes, there is, you know, it, it is recovering, but there is still concerns of that saltwater intrusion. And that's essentially what the report refers to and recommends the last reduction. So um, the next topic is um, some of our future projects, and these would be new projects that we've added to remember the now 10-year CIP. And so one such project is the LTS Phase 3 aeration upgrades. Um, this is very similar to the blue frog, gold frog concept that we all are very familiar with. And so um, we're looking at replacing the aging equipment. 
Um, this is going to be another test pilot program because in this instance we're taking four larger horsepower and we're going to be installing 14 smaller horsepower units. And so um, we're, just to make sure that the results are going to be similar to what we had found with the first Blue Frog and Gold Frog. So this will be a test pilot for one year with the larger motors and then the next phase <coughs> Um, if that's successful, then we're looking at replacing um, eight more aerators with the Blue Frogs. So those are two more projects that we've got identified. Um, the next project is Poplar Branch Pump Station Number 2 in Associated Sewer. So this project is scheduled to begin in FY26, and it's based on the growth, what, we're, what we project in the Piney Green area. We would have to get um, some ag agreement with the Marine Corps base for the treatment, for them to collect the treatment. And it's kind of difficult to see, but it's outlined in that mauve color. Um, and so basically it is the um, gravity from roughly the area that would be served would be the Patriot Park subdivision. And it would be fed into the new Poplar Branch 2, which is uh, in this map just north of Poplar Branch 1. Um, and then it would feed into a uh, force main that, to go into the Piney Green sewer system that feeds into the base. And so this would be, um, again, a project scheduled in 2026. Um, and so I would say that um, since the first draft that we gave you in the CIP, um, there has been very, very minor changes. And the minor changes have been really geared more towards the general fund side of the, the whole CIP and not necessarily with the utility side. And so um, we are seeking your support and recommendation of the proposed CIP. Um, and as always, it would be adopted with the budget um, that's adopted annually by June 30th. I have a question on the very, very first slide where you talk about the Gum Branch Road widening. Um, I heard from somebody who's over on the Briar Neck area that they had gotten a letter regarding the road going in between Ramsey and Highway 111, uh, I guess notifying them that some year that's going to be coming through. That stretch of Gum Branch, are you going to be planning on the fact that that other road's going to be coming through there, or are you going to be taking that part of any modifications of your infrastructure into account at that time? Are you talking about the utility coordination between both projects? Yes. Yes, and so that is, that's one area that we are working with DOT. Um, and what we found, so when we did the Jacksonville bypass, mm -hmm. so we had to um, modify some of our utilities or relocate them for those projects. And so we are working with DOT to, to ensure that we're not having to pay for the system twice. And so, um, and we're working through that. So um, this is, uh, we're, not, we're not as familiar with their rules as they are. And so we're trying to learn as much as we can and to figure out how we can ensure that the coordination is between the two different engineering firms so that we can minimize the expense for the city. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. None? None. Good, good. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So if the board's willing, we would like a recommendation of support um, to forward along to city council. You've got a lot of stuff planned. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the main thing is with looking at it now for 10 years instead of five years, it's called, okay, how fuzzy is that crystal ball out there, that additional five years? Well, and, oh, that's a great segue. <laughs> well, and when you, when you talk about um, projects that are there, are, you know, we're planning for some sort of growth, you know, it's about as fuzzy as the developer's coming to us um, but what I you know I guess the important thing is while we're recommending approval of adoption of a you know a 10-year capital improvement plan we're only funding the first year mm -hmm. so you know that's why we put a little heavier emphasis on that first year and you know it, as a staff as we're trying to put these together we go on the information that we have available and if we have, you know, we continually update our water and sewer models, uh, we continually track the developments and the developers that we are talking to. And as, um, as they change or they um, show interest in other properties, we adjust appropriately. If, if they say that, you know, 
we think this is going to be further out or we're not moving forward yet. We, you know, we adjust our projects. So, you know, some of those long-term projects, what they do is identify that when that area develops, that those improvements are going to be needed. And if we have to adjust those, and it's likely that those could adjust forward, you know, if, if we see times again like we saw in 2005, 6, and 7, we may need some of those projects that are in year 8 back in year 4 or 5. So, you know, that's, that's why we update this on an annual basis. From prior years, sometimes you've <clears throat> shown them to us with, like, urgent or semi-urgent or yeah, it's a good idea. Hopefully we'll have the money for it kind of ranking. Anything urgent that's been having to be bumped? I don't think we have bumped anything that is urgent. I think the biggest thing that we have bumped is the uh, Parkwood Regional Trunk Sewer. Mm -hmm. And we did that based on our most recent modeling effort that we've done. As I said, we update our water and sewer models um, and, and our master plans so, you know, as, as Greg has presented to City Council, one of the things that became evident um, with the latest iteration of the model is that we have more capacity in the existing system that goes to Brookview and the existing system that goes to Henderson um, than we originally thought we did. Uh, you know, as an example, we thought that we would only, uh, that we wouldn't, even be able to get the first phase of the track that we've called the vineyards in Cypress Creek, you know, that large tract on Cumbranch Road. You know, a, under a previous model, it said that we wouldn't get the first phase through or we would, we just would get the first phase through our existing system. And our model now, um, which has been recently calibrated and rerun, says that we will get more of that. There, it, don't get me wrong, improvements will be needed. Um, or that project would have to move forward to complete that development, but we have more time. So we, you know, it's not something that we can push out forever, but we will, we move it, we have moved it, what we think is appropriately. So that's, that's probably one of the biggest changes is, of course, I think we shared that with you after one of uh, Greg's updates, but that's probably the biggest change from last year's capital improvement plan is that, you know, that's a $34 million project that has bond funding. So, um, but, you know, we also, as a staff, do not want to get back to where we were in 2007 when everything was trying to grow and we were under a special order by consent <coughs> with the state and we were having to count out every gallon that we gave out. And you know, basically limiting developers to say, um, you have 12 months to use this. So it, we are trying to walk that fine balance of being prepared, but not over prepared. So, it, it, and I have to say it's a, you know, it, it is a hard balance, but we we use all of the information that we have available to do that. And that's why that's why projects don't stay static in the capital improvement plan. Well, that going north on 17 has been like that. That goes back and forth and That's right. speeds up and slows down. And how long has that been going on? Uh, with that, that one's been in there at least two years. Yeah. And, well, and again, every year we call the developer and say, we're going to push this out unless you, mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. you plan to move forward. Yep. So, and I think one year we actually told them that we were going to push it out if they didn't annex the property, and that's how we got it annexed. He's not shaking his head yes, so I may have misstated that, but. No, I mean, they've always knew to get water and sewer from they've had to be annexed. So they went ahead and annexed. Okay. okay. So with all these projects that you've shown, you don't anticipate any increase in funds from the city to pay for it? Um, like tax uh, rates going up or anything like that to have to pay for it? We That's will, the bottom line. We will get into a detailed rate discussion in just a few minutes. So I'm not saying we're, 
we're trying not to put the cart before the horse. <coughs> but what I will say is that what you'll see as part of that is the FY19 projects do not cause a required rate increase in FY19. I love how you stipulated the mm. dates in there. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. Okay. I heard tap dancing going on. <laughs> Would somebody Wait. like to make a motion about recommending this to the city council? I make the motion that based on what he said about no increases in, <laughs> in at least one year makes me feel a little better that we recommend that we do pass on to the city council our recommendation and support. I, I kind of want to hear the rate discussion first, but anyway. All in favor of your motion? Against? Three to one. Got that right. <laughs> Any All discussion? Right. <laughs> okay. okay. So, part of the reason that we did the capital improvement plan first is because it does impact two things. It impacts Thank the you, um, not only the rate model discussion we're going to have, but it also impacts the system development fees. Um, so, I know that you've seen this before, so I'll run through it rather quickly. But system development fees are one-time fees that are paid by a builder or developer for new connections to the water and sewer system. And basically, what they are doing is paying for projects that uh, are there to provide for growth. So basically, this is how growth funds itself. And with that, there was legislation changes that I know we've talked about several times. Um, they basically set forth requirements that we had to, to meet in order to have these system development fees. And we had a system development fee analysis conducted by Stantec. Um, based on the legislation, which says you can use one of three methods to calculate these fees, um, Stantec recommend that we used a combined method. And basically what that combined method means is that we will, we can charge or calculate into our system development fees, fees that, or costs that the city has um, borne for improvements that growth will later utilize. An example, a great example of that is the construction or expansion of the land treatment site. If the city was not growing, we obviously wouldn't have to have expanded our land treatment site. So when we expanded, we expanded uh, 3 million gallons per day. So we went from 6 million gallons a day to 9 million gallons a day. And that cost was about $47 million. So instead of placing that entire burden on the ratepayers who did up front the cost and are over time paying the debt service, we are recovering that cost as development occurs through our system development fees. So that is somebody coming in and basically buying into the system. They're buying into capacity that is already available. So that's the first piece of the combined method. The second piece is based on improvements that, that you think you will need or that you that your plans show that you will need to provide for capacity for future growth areas. And a great example of that is the uh, project that Deanna mentioned in the Piney Green area, where it was the pump station and force main and gravity sewer uh, at Poplar Branch to provide for future growth. So that is a future planned expense it's it's within our 10-year window that's why we have a 10-year cip and it is a project that is solely for growth so we stantec recommended because of the investments we've already made in our infrastructure and the robust capital improvement plan and other planning documents that we have in place to move forward with this combined method so they did that and they helped us calculate our um, what we could charge and they did this by coming up with um, a value 
of our system. So we took the value of our utility system, and that is basically the depreciated value, um, and then it's, it's basically some of those projects are really old. So what we did is we came up with a de depreciated value, and that's escalated up to a replacement cost. So it brings it to kind of current day dollars. And then we took, as a combined method, the planned projects that are in capital improvement plan. So that's where we get our system value. And then the, the legislation required a credit. And basically what that credit is, is the outstanding principal um, in our debt. So we've borrowed money to pay for those projects, but we haven't paid all of that back yet. So we are we have to issue a credit on that remaining debt. And then from there, you so you have the, the volume of value of your system. You've basically subtracted out the debt that you have on that. And then you divide it by your system capacity, which in our case is a total of 10 million gallons per day on the sewer side, which I'll show in just a minute. And um, I don't remember the total, but five or six on the water side. So you do this separately. So here's the water. The value of our system is $70 million, $70.5 million, give or take. The, the credit's $17.6 million, so that's our outstanding debt. And then you divide it by 7 million gallons a day. And that number is based on the availability we have in the Black Creek, so that's 2 million gallons. And then it's based on what we are currently able to treat through the water treatment plant. Now, I know that we've talked about we have a 4 million gallon plant, a day plant, that is um, expandable to 9 million gallons, or sorry, 8 million gallons a day. And the, But while it's expandable, we don't have the wells to support that. So we are truly limited by our capacity and our well filled and the membranes we have. So that total is 5 million from the Castle Haines. So that gives us our total of 7 million gallons per day. So we essentially end up with a $2,800 um, per equivalent development unit. Some people refer to that as equivalent residential unit, but equivalent development unit. The sewer system was done the exact same way. And you can see we have 140 40 million dollar give or take value for our sewer system the credit on our outstanding debt is, or sorry the outstanding debt um, is 50 million dollars for the credit and we have a 10 million we have a total of 10 million gallons per day of total treatment capacity now that's 9 million at our own plant and then the 1 million we have in agreement with on Wassa and Camp Lejeune and that gives us a total of $3,366 per equivalent development unit. So what we do is that gives us our equivalent development unit, and then we use the American Water Works Association manual for meter equivalents. And we take, and that's where we multiply those out by meter size. So that, that just shows you how that equivalent development unit multiplies out. And you can see at a four inch meter, you know, it's 25 times that equivalent development unit. So we did that for water and for sewer. And you can see that the water fee, the maximum supported fee, went up on an equivalent development unit here, which is the 5 8 meter, and that's our smallest meter, about You'll see a note at the bottom there, and I added this because I realized that it was not in the slide the last time that I presented this to you, and I apologize for that. <coughs> but we have um, our residential detached rate, current rate, is based off of a 5 eighths inch meter. So what we say is um, a detached is basically a, a single family home, and what we say is for a single family home, we're not going to charge you by the meter size, we're going to charge you by the home because that is our basis for that equivalent development unit. So the equivalent development unit is essentially one home. So what we've said is 
our smallest meter size is a 5 8 so we're going to charge the equivalent of the 5 8 meter for a single family home most of the time they do have the option to come in and um, when they're building a single family home they can place a three quarter inch meter uh, and in some cases what we do is we will actually calculate based on the number of fixtures the uh, what meter size would be recommended and if that meter size is a three quarter inch then we would let them we would let an applicant know that but they have the option to go with a 5 8 meter um, so this was a uh, decision that was made with the previous um, system development fee study we found that it worked really well and one of the things that that study also mentioned was when you have higher density development, then there's um, less pressure or less expense on your system per mile. And basically what that's saying is you're concentrating a whole lot of services into one area. So to get the equivalent, so if you have a 100 unit townhome complex, it takes up a lot less space, a lot less pipe than a 100 unit single family development. So what they did is, and um, this was Tischler Weiss at the time, what Tischler Weiss did was calculate um, essentially a, credit's not the right word, discount I guess is a better word for it. And on the water side it worked out to about three and a half percent. Now I don't remember that was done in 2008 or 9. I don't remember what that calculation was, but it does work out to about 3.5% um, for a, a discount off the 5 8 meter for a residential attached unit. So attached would be duplex, quad, triplex, quadplex, apartment building. Uh, that's per unit. And that's per unit. So if you have a 200-unit apartment complex, it would be 200 units times that fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's time we, what this fee that you got up here? It would have been, so our current system development fee, it would be, and I don't have the number up there, I apologize, but if you take that <coughs> 21, 19 right here at the top, yeah, right. and you discount that by about three and a half percent, they would have to, they would pay 200 for a 200 unit apartment complex. 200 times, you know, 2,000 and I don't know if you can do that. I can't do that in my head, but it's four million probably. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> it, I mean, it's, a little, it, it's significant. Is it still going to be discounted in the new? Well, that's uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay. So this is the sewer side of it, and you'll notice that <laughs> I'm going to go back. The water side went up $680. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the sewer side actually came down about $433. And again, the same thing I talked about, the residential detached is essentially equal to this 5 8 number. Um, but on the sewer side, they calculated roughly a 5.5% a discount. So when you add those together, the total for the current is on the left-hand side. So the current, and I'm going to stick to the 5 8 meter, because that is the equivalent development unit of $5,918. The right side would be what the maximum amount allowed by law calculated by Stantec is $6,166. So just under $6,200. And you can see that the difference is the maximum allowed to the city's allowed to charge on system development fees went up about two hundred and forty eight dollars per equivalent development unit is this so so if you were doing i'm just gonna i'm gonna stick with single family because it's easier if you did a hundred unit single family right. development they would be charged under our current fee five thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollars times 100 for a total of is that five hundred ninety thousand dollars mm -hmm. and under the new they would pay six hundred and 
sixteen thousand. How does this go to houses? Just one, like one house and one house is one house under the new fee. The maximum we could charge is this number right here. That's per year. That, that's most. No, that's a one-time one connection time. fee. Oh, to, oh but, so, so if anybody, you're already connected, you're not going to have. Okay. That's exactly correct. You're, you're so if you're already over connected. Here. If you're already connected, you already have service, this will not impact you. It will only impact you if you decide to go build a house somewhere else and you desire to connect well, to our system. Well, see, now, all, we've talked about this a couple of other times, and Mr. Thomas has too. I've got a three-quarter inch meter at my house. I was told I had to have that because they counted up how many sinks, how many this, that, and I had something like 20-some appliances that used water, but I'm the only one there. A, a month ago, I didn't use but 200 gallons all month. No, so, I wasn't there, and, and I still paid the same amount, you know. So what you could do, and others in that situation, what you could do is if you, if you think you have a larger meter than you actually need, you can come to the city, request a smaller meter. So if you have a three-quarters, you could go to a 5.8. I had now, a the five smallest, yeah. Our smallest size is a 5.8, so you can't go below a 5.8. But you would pay, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think it's a $50 change-out fee for a residential meter. And then the city will come out, swap from a three-quarter inch meter to a 5 8 And there, there is a savings on the bill. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's probably, it's probably 10 or 15 bucks. I think it's about $30. It's, it's a month that. or mm -hmm. what? What do you pay? What's your minimum? My, my total bill is $70.07. It's $20 a month. Month. That's, that's what I pay. That's oh, okay. Whether so I about use, 20 I, and I've been for the last year and a half, of course, but that's under 2000 Yeah, anywhere from seven, eight hundred. Because I'm the only one there, you know. I've been taking a shower or washing. But that's you the five have eight. To sign an acknowledgement. And, and that's what I needed was a five eight, and I had one until I added on to the house, and then they. He was asking what you were paying for three quarters. Yeah, well, yeah. this was an inspector come out and say, "Oh, you got to have a three quarter meter because you got three bathrooms, you got three toilets, two, you know, this washer, ice machine, the sinks, and so he added them all up." It's about say. thirty dollars different. Mm -hmm. So. Our a couple of years ago, we changed our policy from saying we, we did have a sheet that you literally plugged into the sheet, the number of fixtures, and based on the AWWA, I showed the American Water Works Association that I showed you a few minutes ago, it told you what size meter you should have. And the city followed that, and that was our policy. A few, a few years ago, the question was raised, well, what if, what if I live alone, or what if... You know, I'm not going to run my dishwasher, my washing machine, and take a shower all at the same time and, and water my yard. You know, I'll be fine with a 5 8 meter. So what we, we changed our policy to say, if you're willing to sign basically a sheet that says you understand that it, you per your devices, it, it says you should have a 3 quarter, so you may have reduced performance. If you go with a five eights and you sign it, we'll we'll change it out. Matter of, and for what it's worth, I have a five eights in my house. So and that's and everybody. I, I think I was right on the preceded verge. those, like my neighborhood. You know, I've got a five eights, but I have that number of uh, fixtures. But it predated the that policy. formula. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, anyway, you should have done you that a long time ago. How do you find out what size meter you have? <laughs> no. I don't, I don't want to lose the, water the best pressure. thing is to check with us. Call Pardon the city. We can tell you what size. You can also tell by your bill because the yeah, bill for the half three quarters is higher than the same five time. I mean, the why? Well, that's because <laughs> yeah, like we, it's well, the analysis we thing. actually did was the justification for the additional charge was the availability. That's right. See, they didn't charge and, you and to put it in. Well, right, but I'm just saying. So what we did was we studied the actual usage comparing the people with the five eighths and comparing people with three quarters and there was really no variation of actual there's no usage. difference i could tell between the two of them so, yeah. but now would this save you all talk about thirty dollars would this save thirty dollars off my bill if i went back to five eighths meter mm -hmm. you are so five instead eights. of seventy dollars i could be paying no. No. 45 or 50. Yeah. No. Okay. no you you are paying the five eighths rate He's at three quarters. He said he has. He's at seventy dollars. That's the five eight. Oh, I think you're you're counting. 
don't forget there's $20 added for sanitation. Sanitation. And, so and he said his bill is 70 something. So the, but he's only the, the, using whole, the, base the whole bill is 70. Trash pickup. <laughs> your entire <laughs> bill is 70? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then and you're he's at, at a 5 8. He's at the 5 8. Well, so they're charging, uh, no, I've got a 3 quarter because that's what they put in. Well, they're, they're charging you for a 5 8 if you've got a $70 okay. base bill. <laughs> 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 Gail <laughs> says she will take care of that tomorrow. Yes, yeah, she will. They can do it to that, Gail. Charge them double. <laughs> so, uh, what we're looking for tonight is your recommendation to carry forward to City Council. And as I see it, you basically have two things that we're looking for consideration on. And I've given you three options of each. And basically, the first option, the first thing that we would like you to talk about is the recommendation on the amount to charge for the system development fees. And basically, the three options is, um, and I should have put a or up here, the maximum supported amount. So the amount that I showed you on this chart, so this is the total right here. Option two is to go with something less of that. So, for example, we could match our current fee because you can adopt less. You cannot adopt more, but the council could decide, you know, if, if we want to incentivize growth or we compare to, you know, a neighboring provider and they are less than us, then we could say, you know what, we, we're willing to give a discount to encourage growth. So you can charge less. So option two would be to, you know, so charge something less, for example, match the existing fees. Um, and option three would be, I guess, really, I did put the or up there, a percentage of that. So, you know, look at somebody else and match somebody else. Example would be Omwasa. Look at Omwasa's rates and match Omwasa. Um, provided they're not higher. I have a question. For the maximum supported, that's a calculated value based on cost to city. That is correct. So that would mean that... So it's not really maximum supported, it's it's well, cost. No. It's it's a maximum supported by the fee analysis. And the so fee it's analysis... the maximum allowed per the fee analysis, which is by law. But that is what it actually costs us. I mean, we can go correct. less than what costs us, That's but we can't correct. go more than what it costs That's right. us. That so is So by maximum supported, we're not saying, oh, we're just going to charge as much as we can just for the sake of charging as much as we can. It would be to recoup the costs to the, the city to that be able to pay for and maintain the system. That is correct. Okay. It is not maintain. Well, but pay for. Pay for. Right. Because so overcharging more than you were allowed is what got this into court in the first place other places other, other places, places not us yeah let me make that clear other, other places decided that this was yes so, so I'm, I, that's why I'm, i <coughs> sort of don't like the maximum supported just as a semantics part of it but you know cost to the city for the development so you would like to see growth support itself yeah, yeah. As much as we'd like to support growth, if you don't collect the fees here somehow or another, this is going as a rate increase. And well, it's not fair that it fair that I pay more or some retired pay, person pays more for their water bill to support some developer building houses. And you can't tell me developers lose money on houses. They walk away with money, even with those fees increased. So that's so those are the three options that I see for um, the amount to charge. And then the three options, um, I see the, the other thing I would like you to consider is um, whether we should continue with our existing residential program, where we have basically a rate that we charge residential based on that equivalent development unit, which is the 5%. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the way the way I see that is you have three options there also. You do it by meter size, so there's no residential rate. The, the rate is whatever meter size you get. Now, what I can tell you is, based on this chart, if somebody has a 5 eighths meter, but they come in and they say, well, I've got four kids. Yeah. It recommends that I have a three quarters. I'll go with a three quarters. They're now going to play, pay $9,200 for, for that house 
rather than $6,100. Well, are they really, or is the developer going to decide what meter goes in when they build that house? I mean, ultimately, the person buying the home is the one that comes with the money. They do, but the, <laughs> the developer is so, going to pay that. They're well, going to put three quarters, and they're going to put five eighths in all those houses, you think. Because the house is built before the, the buyer buys The house is built it. before the buyer walks over. Most of the yeah. time, but that cost is then passed along. Mm -hmm. yeah. But most so, of the developers, you, what do they put in a single-family residential, five eighths? Probably. Yeah. They're not but required to, based on fixtures, to put in and Not whatever. based on our new policy. So they At can the put in anything they want. The was built in 96. The developer decided what was going to go there because he was told he had to have three quarters, and that's what was put in there. But now they can decide, which pretty much so. means they'll be putting five eighths in unless they're enormous homes. So... The other option is to go with a residential rate only. So that would apply to um, single family and multiple family. There wouldn't be a difference there. So you say, you know, we would like to see that equal the equivalent development unit. Or you could go with an option similar to what we have in place now, which is um, a single family rate and then a discounted multiple family rate. But that would be... So, but, but the other rates would be for the, the one and a half, the two, the four. Those would still be in place. That's correct. That would apply to commercial development, essentially. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question. For somebody who has a house with five-eighths and the developer, buyer, whoever, if they then come back and say change it to a three-quarters, then they're just paying the meter switch out. They're not Difference. paying no, that. They'll pay the additional. Yeah, if, if, if you went with option one here and a homeowner says that develop, or the builder, developer, whomever makes the decision to install five eights, and homeowner comes in and says, that's not working, I need a three quarter, mm -hmm. what they're going to have to do is pay the difference between these two. For how long? One. It would be a one time. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if somebody build a house now, 20 years from now, you're going to make them pay that difference if they want a bigger meter? Yeah, oh, yes. So if, if, Mr. Thomas, you said you have a 5.8? Oh, yeah. So let's say Mr. Thomas, something happens and he needs a larger meter. Mm -hmm. If he came in and we had the, we went with meter size and he moves from 5.8 to 3 quarters, mm -hmm. he would have to pay the difference between the existing rate. Okay. Unless the house was first built with the three quarters, they went down to five eighths. If they want to go back up, then they can. But if they were built at three five eighths and they want to go to three quarters, then they have to pay the difference. Yes. Okay. But my question is: Is are you going to charge him what the development fee was when his house was built? No. What yeah, you do? It, it's at, or the development the fee at the time he wants the meter change yes. out. The development fee at the time. The difference the between. Yes. Randy, so what you your meter with mine? <laughs> so <laughs> so what what you would assume is when he bought in he bought in at this rate if he's got a 5 8 meter mm -hmm. whether that fee was two dollars mm -hmm. it's now that fee is sixty one hundred dollars so we would charge the difference between the existing two fees you, you would act if it, as if he was a 5 8 being built today That's right, because he's already got he already has this capacity right and he's going to this capacity i think maybe you're wrong because the sewer wouldn't really change it would just be back you'd go back to the water it's still based on the three-quarter that's the way we do it because you have the capacity to put more into the sewer system oh, really? too. That's yes better. sir okay. Okay. and that's the way we do uh commercial properties mm -hmm. because commercial properties do do that more if you have a you know if you have a, a strip center that's mm -hmm. broken up into five units and you know it's a little toy store now and a restaurant comes in behind it many times that restaurant needs a larger meter they have to pay the difference between what was between paid originally what was what is between the meter size that is there yeah. and the meter size they're going to okay so there are some other advantages to having a residential um, the the most realistic one though really if you think about it is strictly going by meter size do you see what I mean I can tell you that um, I can tell you that there are other places that do do that they go strictly by meter size mm -hmm. um, so that is certainly an option I, I, I'm trying to figure out what the difference is in just saying meter size and, and calling residential five eights because the five eights 
basically would that's are, mostly are there, what most houses are yeah i mean are, are, are there have, are there businesses that go in at five eights oh yes yeah. absolutely so so if that's why you would say it's right it would apply to residential rest. only so you would have a residential if you have a store and that all you have is a bathroom in the back for employees to wash their hands and go to the bathroom you don't need anything more than five so eights. so what do you mean by okay so you'd have a residential five eights and then you have a commercial five eights so what you would have what we currently have the way it's listed out in our fee schedule is residential it says residential detached residential attached and if you look at the re residential detached which is single family it is exactly equal to what the five eighths meter is because that would be equivalent development unit at the time so what is the benefit to a meter size only one um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that part. if somebody wants there are oh there are homes in town that have a one inch meter okay just what the contractor wanted at the time it, or the homeowner they may have a pool but there's still an irrigation system but on any or, of those they could they could do that they could but the difference is if they have a one inch meter they're going to pay fifteen thousand dollars for that meter they would on any of those schedules unless you have a residential rate because then it limits it to the residential and that's what we currently have but a house could decide well not the house can't decide but the owners of the builder of the house could decide to put in a one inch in which case they'd go with the fifteen thousand dollars they could but it'd still be residential it's a house so it's res it that's why i'm not sure i understand the residential designation because i don't see the benefit of having the designation so if if a a business can have a five eighths and a house can have a one that's correct and the house would under our current fee the house would pay this fee right here whether it had a one or a five eighths? it had a one or and one i think is the biggest that i know about but i do know we have some with a one um because we have one on country club drive that has the one so um, that's for the one with the wall um so so right now a residential development pays the 5918 unless it's multifamily. So if they put in a three a, quarter, they would still pay the fifty That's correct. That is our current policy. That I don't really see because then you're talking about they could be still taking out more water and putting in more water so they're not really paying for what they're potentially using our, our current fee is based on an equivalent development unit we said that equivalent development unit was basically a detached house a single family home yes but that was so assumption at five eighths. A five eighths or a three quarter it is residential pays 5918. Well, isn't this maybe i'm getting confused hearing all the talking but it you're talking about yeah, just a one-time fee to change one. it from it's not the monthly fee that's, that's still going to be at three one. quarter one inch or whatever that's, that's still gonna be that fee this that's is just correct. a one-time swap out that's, that's it that's no correct. that's the one-time yeah. new or one -time development build or one-time yeah. build that's correct but i'm but saying if, if if randy wanted to swap it out he would just get the difference from a one or three quarter to to five eighths is that not correct that is he correct. still would have to pay that that's correct but but why if they're you're saying they're saying that there's the residential yeah. fee but there is um if you have a five eighths inch meter mm -hmm. your base charge is less than a three quarter inch meter so monthly you're paying more even though your one-time fee is the same but okay randy you're being used as an example so much tonight so back <laughs> to randy his house was originally a five eighths with our current system if he wanted to go to a one inch you're saying he would not pay a difference because somebody putting in a one inch right now would only be paying the 59.18 that's correct as long as it's residential that is correct so that's the current policy but if it's residential it's 50 the 59.18 that is correct but his monthly bill would go up would go, go up because his right. base is bigger yeah that's correct yeah which means he's putting more water taking more water out and putting more water in and potentially this goes potentially. back to potentially. this goes back to the study that mr thomas 
talked about earlier is that we found that there was not significant usage difference between the two. So there really wasn't a disadvantage in charging more for the three quarter. So people are getting these, people the that have these three limited. quarters and ones aren't really using warm water. Not necessarily. No. They may have done it for other reasons, or they may now if they if they do have if they have irrigation don't have a separate irrigation meter. Mm -hmm. It's entirely possible they use more water. It's entirely possible that they may would want that. If they have a pool, they may would want a larger mm -hmm. meter. So, those are the two options. Um, staff's recommendation is to basically adopt the fees that are supported by the analysis. So that would mean that we're saying that the growth pays for itself. Can you go back screen? Sure. That's so that's option one. Mm -hmm. And then we are recommending a residential fee for residential, but not splitting it by detached and attached, just saying the residential fee and we would say that the residential fee is that $6,200. And when somebody builds apartments, are they charged that much for each apartment? They are. Oh, yeah. With the residential fee, yes, they are. So it, even if they master meter, it is based on the number of units. Because that's the number of families you would have living there? That's correct. So if you have a 24 unit, 24 units seems to be a fairly common number mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in apartment buildings. They may be served by a two inch meter. They wouldn't pay the two inch meter fee. They would pay 24 times $6,100. Gotcha. Okay. If you went with a, you know, if you go with the residential. Are you still going to keep that discount for them? No, not from what they showed. I, that wouldn't be my recommendation because we did not try to calculate the discount or, or figure that out. Okay. I just gave you what was figured out at the last one. Okay. Which was how long ago? Uh, 2009, I think, is when we did that study. So you think option one on the amount to charge, could you go back? Sorry. And yes. option two on the residential fees? Correct. Okay, I just wanted from to be staff, clear. From staff recommendation to right. you for you to recommend to city council. I think for a resident of Jacksonville to want to do that, this is a better rate for them. Say, even with uh, you know Jim and, and Randy, as residents, if they wanted to increase theirs, they don't have to pay the five-eighths rate versus having to pay the other. The new rate is still going to uh, be the five-eighths, right? for a new developer, but you anticipate getting that back from the users, correct? I got lost. I'm sorry. All right, that's all right. I, I was lost. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying, question. you know, to me it makes sense for the residents of Jacksonville that want to make this change that we don't have to charge them gotcha. extra. I got you. I and, you know, the five eights to me would make more one. sense as a resident of Jacksonville. Now, the new developers, I don't care about. Right. Be honest with you. Basically, they're all going to be putting in five eights, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Well, so this would like certainly that. force them to put in five eights. If you if you went with a um, that's a good size difference. If if yes, but, if you if if city council adopted this uh -huh. meter only, no residential fee, yep. then we would essentially, I mean, you'd eliminate three everybody quarters. would essentially move to five eights. Yeah. Well, you're looking at three thousand dollars for him to have to put one in. Well, if, he, no, otherwise, he, he would not. That's that was the discussion we had before. That he well, would I not he have to pay the difference. He does not have to pay the difference because of if, if you go with the residential. If you don't part. go with the residential part. If you yes. don't go with it, he's going to have to pay three thousand dollars. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That's why I'm saying for the citizens of Jacksonville, it makes more sense to protect them by doing the five eights myself. But the real impact is on the new development. Yeah, That's yeah, right. exactly, yeah, exactly. Where it should be, where it should be. But to protect the citizens of Jacksonville, I think the five eighths is the right. Your right. And I can almost see that. more of the older homes going down than going up. Yeah. But question: With that, if a developer was putting in a house and he put in the three quarters, you're saying that because it's residential, he'd still be paying the five eighths rate. If you recommend option two under the bottom scenario. So, yeah. you know, no matter if it's a huge house, medium house, small house, um, 
We would say a house is a house. A house is a house. And <laughs> if they put in the three quarters, see, they'll, they'll, they could still put in the three quarters. They could sit there and say they're going to need three quarters because yep. of all of these different fixtures that we've got in there. Yep. But and they'll only be more monthly. And that will. True. Yeah. But that's, that's that. the ongoing. Right. Right. You know, use all the fixtures you got in the house at one time. Depending on what you've got in your house and who you've got in your house. You've got just yourself. You could you've have. You've got just yourself. Yeah, you know, there's husbands, wives, kids, sometimes grandparents, you know, well, you know name it. Call. It's like me when I had something. all the kids home, there was another five people. Now it's just the two of us. We're in the talking house. new development. Yeah, but yeah. that's the thing. It's new development. It's new development. But still, you're not going to use every, every fixture. We try at my house. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, to, 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 to use them all, or you try not to all use them all? We try to time. use them all. Every <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I'm wondering is if you've got somebody that's going to have a bigger one that's using a lot more of the resource that water is and dumping a lot more in to the well, they'll system. Pay more. They'll pay more they'll for, pay the, water more for the water yeah. in the base rate. Yeah. Okay. So here's our recommendation to you. We, we would like, if I can go before I ask you for your recommendation, um, we're before you tonight for recommendation. There was a 45-day public comment that was required. That ended on April 24th, so we have completed that. We received no comments on that. Um, it was available on the city's website. It was also available here at City Hall in hard copy. We are planning to go to council because the legislation also requires a public hearing on top of the public comment period. So the public hearing will be on May 22nd. If there is, given the lack of comment on the, during the 45 day comment period, if there is not much comment at the public hearing or no comment at the public hearing, then we're going to set it up such that council could move forward with approving the analysis and recommending that it be adopted with the adoption of the budget so that would be at the may 22nd now if there's a you know if if somebody comes out and there is comment that council wants staff to consider or the consultant to consider at that may 22nd public hearing then we still have time to go back to city council with any recommended changes or analysis of the comments before the adoption of the budget so our plan is to get this adopted so that it is adopted with the budget that way because we have to do fee schedule amendments that way we do it all at one time it does give some time uh, before it goes into immediate effect so and that gives staff some time to get everything ready so you go back one slide sure so when we move forward with the public hearing we, we will prepare a council agenda item, and in that, there's a recommendation section, and that's where I would include this board's recommendation, okay. along with the staff's recommendation. I make a motion to support the staff's recommendation of, of adopting option one for the system development and net fee analysis, and option two for the residential fee equivalent. I'll second. All in favor? Third day. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right. So how often, how long does this analysis we've done last? How long is it good for? I think it's got to be done every five years. I need to every go back. Five years? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. You'll have a whole new group of us probably by then to explain it to. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, this group has been very reliable. I'm asking a very question about rates. We haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't gotten to rates yet. We you know, gotten, I don't understand we there, how there's no ever. comment, no public comment. I don't understand why people aren't as excited about water and sewer as we are, you know? <laughs> <laughs> people just take it for granted. They really do. All right. That was a fun discussion. And Gail. Gail's in so the quiet. Next one. Entertain us, darling. <laughs> A rate model discussion. All right, we're going to take a look at the new rate model that we have um, just purchased from Stantec. We started this whole process when we were looking at the Parkwood project and we thought it was going to begin this year. 
we were talking to our financial analyst and talking about the bond issue, and they said, you know, it's been a long time since you had your feasibility study, 2009, and in conjunction with the 2009 study, we developed the current rate model that we were using. And we said, well, if we're going to go for another feasibility study, it makes sense to look and see what's out here. And um, so we sent out an RFP. We received several responses, including the people that we have the current model with and Stantec. Um, when we looked at the models and we looked at the functionality, the team that was going to be working on the project, um, we decided to go with Stantec because their model offered some things that we didn't currently have. Um, one of them is a, is a dashboard that makes it easier to show you what's going on. And then um, it also offered one of the things that we had worked on with the old model was, okay, we budget $100,000, but we really only spend 95 of it. So you don't want to base your rate on 100000 when you, mm -hmm. and, and this model takes that into account. And we go back and look historically how much we spent. And um, it does it go the other way too? So if you spent 110, no, oh. North Carolina does not allow you to exceed your budget. And if you want to get in trouble with me, go ahead and try. <laughs> I'm pretty serious about that. Yes. <laughs> um, the rate model takes into account several components. Um, there are a slew of assumptions. That's a technical term. Mm -hmm. And we enter our budgets, our actual historical data. Um, we enter the capital improvement plan, the current debt. We estimate future debt. All of that rolls up into this rate model. This is there's several little snippets here of what's in the model. Um, this is where we enter the um, number of equivalent residential units, and we make assumptions about increases, what the historical increases have been, and um, what we expect them to be in the future. We enter our current rate model, our current rate structure, and then as it goes through and calculates, it manipulates this number to what it needs to be to cover our expenses. This is another tab in the model where we put in the history of the revenues, um, and and then it forecasts them out. You can't see all the tab, all the spreadsheet, but it goes out for the 10 years to calculate the um, forecast. <coughs> Same thing for the expenses. We enter all the expense lines, history, budget, full year estimates, and then it projects out for the 10 years. We also enter in the capital improvement plan in the in the 10 years. Um, and further out on this page, it, you tell it how you're going to fund it. If you're going to fund it by cash, you're going to okay. fund it by debt. And then we enter all the existing debt. And um, I think on the assumption, the first assumption tab, we tell it the um, criteria that we have to cover our debt by 1% sent or one time what this what for the this bond state requirements. requires yeah okay and here's the panel I was talking about where we can show you in a very summarized fashion what happens um, I'm gonna try to kind of I don't know if you can see it but I'm gonna try to kind of walk down and show you what what information is here if you go right under where it says fiscal year and it says override, mm -hmm. that's where we can plug in. You'll see they plugged in 3.75. This is how it came from the from the. Um, and this is not our proposal. No, no, way. <laughs> no this is not. I'm going to ask where that came from. <laughs> no, this is just how it came. This okay. is the way we got the model. So you can plug in an override rate, and you know this board I know has talked about it many many times. How rather than having a 25 percent increase in you know 10 years we would rather have two percent two percent one percent whatever and and this will demonstrate that you'll see that later when we actually show you where we plug the stuff in but the blue line is the current calculation like we can could have plugged in three percent in the under 18 
and mm -hmm. nothing for the rest. And the blue line would show you, okay, if you do 3% in 2018, when's your next required increase and how much is it? Okay. So when we do that, you can say, okay, well, I want to compare that to something else. And you hit that save button up there, it moves that to the green line, and then you can recalculate the blue line and compare the two. It'll be easier to see when, you sh when I show you what we've done. Um, the same thing for the sewer, and then there's the combined rate, and then the next bunch of lines is the, um, shows the coverage. That's our debt coverage. Our bond covenant requires that we cover our debt one time or 1.2 times, depending on whether we include retained earnings or not. And that's, that's more for us to watch where we are to be sure that we don't get too close to that number. And then the last two lines, the blue and the green, show you what the average 6,000 gallon water sewer bill would be. So that's the base plus 4,000. Is is six thousand what are, is is that our average bill or is that our, just what you picked? I think our average is a little less than that, but that's just something we've always compared is six thousand gallons. Is, is that the true average or is that like the median? So half the bills are less than that because I mean we've got some really big users that could pull the number up. Um, I think the real average is is just over five, isn't it? I think it's gone up a little bit, but, but, what's, but it's, yeah, it's, it's kind it of is an average. It's kind of interesting knowing what the median is, so yeah. half the bills above, half the bills below. It's so hard because when you get in, the big commercial ones will skew your skew residential. Yeah. If you pull just the residential, it's more reasonable. And I think the 6,000 gallon is just kind of an industry standard mm -hmm. for a family of four. That's the average, yeah, what a family's supposed to use. Yeah. So we just use that for comparison. And then below this on the sheet, there's all these charts that help us also track. Um, the first one shows where our fund balance is. And you'll see we're up under, almost, just under 20. And the black line is where we set our minimum. We don't want to go below that. And you'll see as we spend money on capital projects, and pay cash for them, that number comes down mm -hmm. closer to the black line. That also can affect need and rate increase. If we get close to the $10 million or whatever that number is, $8 million on this one, then it says, oh, you're getting close to your minimum. We need to add to the fund balance. The second chart to the um, right is our CIP spending. You can see in this one, Parkwood was in 18. That's what that's what's happening there. And the long-term borrowing chart, same thing. 18 was the Parkwood project. We were going to borrow $34 million for that. Um, on the second row, the first chart is our revenues, basically cash in versus cash out. There's supposed to be a gold line on this chart, but when they sent it to us, it didn't show up. That would be our operating expenses our expenses excluding CIP. Um, again, over on the next chart, we've got CIP funding. Where does the money come from? As you'll see, there's like a little bit of PAL bill money, there are facility charges, operating. And then the final one is the water and sewer capital project fund. We discovered when we got the model that that really doesn't mean anything, and we removed that from the, uh, it doesn't change. We put the money in the capital project, and then we spend it. So yeah. it doesn't really develop a fund balance. So those are the things that are there as kind of the dashboard to be able to show somebody a, a simplified, if you will, picture of what's going on. Now, this is where we actually started plugging our, our numbers in and we calculated what kind of rate increase you're going to need just with no override. So in 2021, we'll need a 3.67% rate increase, and then a little tiny one in 22, and then one and a half in 23, and we get all the way out to like 27 before we get to a, a double digit.
Now, what I did is I saved that to the green line. Mm -hmm. so that's this line. The and last we, one you just saw. Right. And then if you look at, we put in an override rate. If you raise the rate 3% this year, and then 2% the next year or two years later mm -hmm. if you do something every other year it kind of mitigates when you get out here to where the 14 percent was under 2027 now you only need a six percent it kind of shows what y'all were talking about that if you if you implement it a little bit at the time and then again across the bottom you'll see the bill goes from eighty dollars to eighty three dollars to eighty four dollars the the small increments in a 6,000 gallon a month bill and you know it just gives you a chance to compare those but you still had a larger increase in 2028 but like you said how how good is your crystal ball right because it and by then by the, in that 10 years you might have saved on something and have less or they had to spend more and have to bump up so well, and as, yeah. as Gail mentioned, you know, there are assumptions that go in this. Yes. And some of those assumptions are like electricity cost, which we can't forecast what's going to happen to electricity cost. So we've put just a little bit in each year for electricity costs, but this year it was 12%. So obviously that's not And that's not a something. lot of money in the water sewer fund. It, it is. is. Yeah. 12% so, increase is a lot. Yeah. So if you know we're not projecting a 12 percent increase anywhere along here you know we may have used one percent or one and a half percent for electricity throughout the course of this model i don't remember what it was but it's somewhere i think in it was that one range. and a half a year so okay. and I, I thought this would be an interesting conversation because i know and we staff chose the the three percent and the two percent and two percent mm -hmm. and that just kind of came up if you did something now how far does that push you out from having to do something this is else? a whole lot less sticker shock than the last that's right one. and we can go back one actually if you go back one you know here's your here's your bills at the bottom and you notice that mm -hmm. all of a sudden you jump up I mean over time you get to the same place or roughly the same place but it's do you want to get there slowly or do you want to get there all at once? And that's that's really the question. Waller. Yes, sir. What I can't figure out some of this stuff here, how you got all these different things, but what are you recommending the council do as far as the rate increases for water for the say the two thousand gallon and the surge rate to go up how much? No, because we brought Tom Nicole and I talked about this two three years ago we talked to the city manager about it and we felt like rather than <clears throat> the last time it went up we had a four percent increase I think it was what we were trying to do was keep that down to uh, like we discussed a half to maybe one percent every year is that because the increase is coming up pay payroll and parts and everything like that was increasing that way there we wouldn't go for three years or so with no increase then all of a sudden because you know we had a lot of uh, talk about the four percent a lot of people called the newspaper and such as that and said you know look i'm on a fixed income they would not i don't think complain about a one percent raise you know where it amount to 70 80 cent a month extra you know on like one percent of my bill of 70 dollars which, which is not only with the water and sir, it's trash pickup and uh, runoff and all like that. But are you doing any of that this year? Have you recommended that or? So we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. Oh, one, okay. thing I, one, one thing I do want to say is when we did the 4% increase, we really didn't have a lot of calls or questions. And when we did the 25% <laughs> increase, I think is when you're remembering, yeah. that one was not pleasant. <laughs> for anybody for us the citizens the ratepayer anybody but the the four percent we really didn't have a lot of calls on but see what i what i've said about it is a lot of people don't get the whole picture and That's they call right. they write into the letters editor and make complaints about it. 
I've told several that have, <clears throat> that have contacted me. I said, why don't you come down to one of our meetings when we're scared? And you can see what the cost is, how it's going up and everything, and you would have a better idea. But nobody wants to come in to a meeting and sit and listen. Well, I, I think that we do have a recommendation from staff to you for you to provide a recommendation to council. Now, you can choose to, to go with what we're recommending to you or not. What I will say is... We're not recommending any certain percentage, but what I will say is that um, the good thing about this model is you can see what that effect does. And I know that there is some there is some thought that well, if you do a half percent now and a half percent next year and a half percent the following year, then basically there's some thought that well, you're just building your budget every year and you're always going to need more. But that's, you know, that's not how we do our budgeting. We, we budget based on our actual needs. Right. And in some years it's less and in some years it's more. Um, and I think this year we're actually down. And, they, and that takes in where the overall for water and sewer is down slightly. But that, uh, that included a 12% electricity increase in water and sewer. So... It's down overall, and we had an increase. So we, we do try to be very cognizant of our budgeting. Can you go forward? I have one question. The senior discount, is that something that's currently offered? I don't think we that, have any discounts. That's Darn it. I really <laughs> wanted the senior discount. No, they're <laughs> service. They're <laughs> senior. <laughs> they're senior. Yeah, no, they're senior. senior debt servicing and all debt servicing. Yes. Well, senior debt means they take more. It's senior debt means they're more so important. Debt service it's charge. More. Okay. Yes. They have better guarantees. Discount. We need a ten percent discount. <laughs> oh no, they have twenty percent up there. You wanted that even more. So Gail, can you? I try. Give us any idea why the big bump comes out in twenty-seven? I mean, it's obviously it's numbers you put in there. I mean, I don't. It's well, if you'll. We reach our, this is else our set minimum uh, in that year. We're we'll spending be. down our fund balance to pay cash for capital projects, right. for regular maintenance type, replacing sewer lines and all those things. Well, you get to, and I think Richard had mentioned this before when he talked to council, that $10 million was about where we, and if you'll see, it starts in 17, a little less than $10 million, and we get up to oh, right at $10 million. Mm -hmm. 10 million. It's right. this rate model figures as a number of months that you're covering oh, your yeah. expenses. Okay. Okay. And it's so eight. We've got it as your expenses. Right. right. Yeah. Your it moves up increases. just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're right now we've got it set to cover eight months. So if we had something come in where we weren't receiving revenue, we could cover eight months. Okay. We would always have keep right. in there to sure. cover eight months. We could right now we could cover more, obviously, but so, so you based your increases not high enough to keep a flat line going all the way across. You, you, that's why that big bump in 2728 is because you've gotten down there and you have to that's jump right. back up again. You have to get that cash in. So that, that's where you get to play with the numbers and see what those lines all do mm -hmm. to even it out a little bit more or less. That's correct. Gotcha. That is not the reserve fund right there, is it? Yes. We we have a reserve fund that is, and Go. we're down to we'll be down to ten million from what we are now. Yes. So the black line would be your reserve fund guidance. So we yes. Yeah, so that's where we set where we we would not like to drop below. This is based on because no we're going to have some problems. Uh, this Just is, like out there at Holiday Mobile is, Home City that one time, you know, they had to dig, what, 20-some feet down to fix a pipe? And a week and a half later, they had to go back and fix another section of the same pipe, but, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 yards back down the way, they had to dig down, and it was a hundred and some thousand dollars. That's correct. And we can have those instances happen, but the good thing is that they don't happen frequently, and we have to date been able to cover that with our existing budget. And that's why I, Gail started this with, we don't always use everything we budgeted. And this actually takes into account for that. It's In the saying, operating budgets, it does. They're, they're saying that 
it recognizes that we don't always use that, so it, it's actually discounted a little bit. Are you comfortable with it dropping to 10, Gail? I'm not. That's eight months, right? That's eight months. That's the eight months is 10 million. When you get to 2028, right now. I mean, it's, it's nice to be able to stop cash for things in 2028. Not... Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I do. You will as an I owner do. of property here, you will. Yeah. Well, it's, it's nice to have be paying cash and not have the debt coming on. That's right. Is well, what's this really, doesn't anticipate no debt because we correct. are right, I understand issuing that. debt for Parkwood, and then I think in twenty three or twenty four, it anticipates another thirteen million, wasn't it, in debt for capital projects. Okay, all right. So it does it does cover some right. And the good thing about this is we got to sit down and look at it and go, whoa, why is there a huge spike? It was in twenty three uh -huh. when we first started looking at it how do we mitigate that and we were like oh wait Bubble there's a bunch of cip projects right. so, so if we borrow money for that that levels it out so so, so the current plan and last plan the current plan was that blue one where you did put in a couple of two percent and three percent increases whereas the last plan was those a whole bunch of increases it was they just were, in time kind of right just as you only do the rate increase just when you need it so the so that one with the three percent to uh two years two percent two years two percent helped lower it level it out a little bit yeah. at least through the 23 24 25 period but you still end up possibly needing something place. additional and, later and if you remember between the two one of them you needed almost 15 percent you can go back yeah and 27 right and the other one was less but it was in 28 so that's why they're that's where they both meet that black line okay which you only did a three percent a two percent a two percent if you did that well it still has what a five percent in 2025 that gets really steep there at the end it does that that gets a little ugly there play with your numbers <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, the good news is we're only looking at the rate increase right now. Right. And, you know, next year, probably more than once next year, we'll play with numbers. Play with the numbers. Because, like you said, where you've, we are. you've made it every other year in this one. Yeah. And, that's, and the, this is just for an example. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and remember, the, the one that we're really looking for support from you tonight to recommend the council is more of a strategy like this where we do a little something now recognizing that we are going to need something in two to three years you know and i'm fairly comfortable with our estimates in the close years you know two years three years it's easier to predict close. i would be yeah you know I, I i wouldn't suggest that we try to do a large increase now to stay off something that happens in mm -hmm. 27 or 28. Yeah. The closer because you are, the so many easier. things are going to change right. by then. We want now, a small increase. The, now. the one every, thing, every year. the one thing that's guaranteed is that utilities are going to be ex more expensive and fuel is going to be more expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are going to have increases at some point, mm -hmm. um, and materials are, have become more expensive. So, you know. Those are things that we are going to have to deal with. But the good thing about this is we feel comfortable looking a few years into the future. And this tells us what we can do now to help with just a few years into the future. And of course, you could say, you know, why do one, two or three percent now? And we'll just pay base the three and a half percent or give or take in three years. So that's and that's certainly an option. One thing we found out too when we were playing with this is if you approach the the benchmarks that you don't want to, it turns yellow. It actually shows you on on this okay. chart that oh, you're approaching your one time coverage or your 1.2 coverage. You need to be careful. <laughs> and I think it actually turns red if you get below. We didn't we didn't get there when we were messing with it. Well, yes, sir. On the bottom down there, the average water and sewer bill for 6,000 gallon is 6,000 the average usage, or is it, you know, like I don't use 6,000. It's an industry standard they use for a single family home. Yeah, but that, that makes, puts it out of 
perspective because there, there's still we, a 2,000 gallon rate. Yeah, if, yeah. Um, don't, mm -hmm. that, uh, that's going to be the 2,000 no, gallon rate. No, of, no, 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 that's okay. for 6,000 gallons. Yeah, but well, there's still I a, use there's 800 or 900. I want to see what my rate's going to be. It'll be for 2,000 gallons. It's going to be for two, but it doesn't show up there what 2,000 gallons. They're showing 6,000. It would be less is, than the. It would be. It would still be exam. well less than the 80 dollars. Can you find out what 2000 is going to be? I can. And From I the people let you that know. have 2000 yes, or under? You use 2000? I use a whole lot more than that. Well, and I filled my swimming pool. So I use 20 some thousand. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's. Uh, where did you put in the number of anymore. accounts? I mean, did you just watch it? Did you start putting that in there? I mean, it. Uh, I, I, you know what I'm saying? As far we as we put it in there as of the date we did it, yeah, it fluctuates. But I mean, you've got something for 27, or you've got have you got a guess what you're gonna? I mean, your account, I think we put in a growth of 100 shower, accounts per year. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I mean, it's it's a very you know. small, I think we were very conservative, and on, I think that's all. And on top of that, there's a place where the industry trend right now is to use less water, of course, yeah, mm -hmm. every so go, so toilet or anything. That's right. Less. So Washington. this actually takes that into consideration also. Oh, oh I see. So a decrease. Yes, it's it's not a lot of decrease, but there is, it does take that into consideration based on historical numbers. Does growth figure into it in any way? Oh, is there assumptions about the growth? Yeah, she puts in 100 new users you know, per year. Is that what you figured? Okay. Just trying to be conservative. I mean, yeah. some years we probably won't have that many. Some right. years we'll have more. Right. Okay. So here's our long-term borrowing we talked about. So that we've got the Parkwood project in 20 and then some of those other projects in 24 and 25. And then here's our recommendation as a staff to you for your consideration when you make a recommendation to city council um, for discussion during the budget. And by the way, this will go to, is that on the next slide? Am I getting ahead of myself? Mm -hmm. This will go to city council on the 22nd at their work workshop. So we would invite you to attend again. You'll probably see a very similar presentation, but we would invite you to attend that workshop also. So what we would recommend is in FY19, and you'll notice we didn't put a specific percentage, but a small increase to lessen the impact of future rate increases, especially seeing that in two years we would be looking around three and a half to four percent. So that's our recommendation to you. That's not, you know, that, that gets away from the, we're not recommending, you know, three percent now, two percent in two years, two percent in two years. That's just an example we showed you. But we're focused on the, the FY19, and this is our recommendation to you for FY19. So this will also let you say that, okay, we're going to, we as in you all, are you going to decide that you need the, the 3%, and then next year you might go, eh, okay, we could skip, and then the following year, two, and then the next year it might be, ooh, darn, we still need to do another two, and then you might not have to and not have to, but you could try to keep the numbers below 5%. That's right. So you don't have that 10, 15% sticker shock. That's correct. Our, our goal would be to keep doing little ones. As did you did. run any kind Some of scenario that just so 2% every year? We could. Wait, I don't think we did that, did we? But they could. We did it for a couple of years. But I don't remember what the outcome was. Because I see where you're doing it three zero three zero now. I was just curious to see what it would, what two every year would look like. I mean, okay. I'd love to see increases be less, be able to be kept below five yeah. percent, so that you know, as you're adjusting, if you're able to keep it, you know, three percent, two percent, four percent, so that we don't have these these big ones. Because the big ones are when people sit there and say, hey, they didn't budget for that. That's correct. And they have that big problem. But if they have more of an expectation of, okay, two, three, whatever, it, it becomes a little bit more. That's in line with other things, too. More manageable. Like, other than, of course, electricity this year. Well, see, that's what yeah. happened the last time. We went two or three years, no increase, then all of a sudden, four percent. Well, what, the, what they're asking, but, what they're recommending is yeah, small this is, increases. This is what I, I would be more inclined to not really think about it. Like okay, so I'll go ahead and make the motion that I support the recommendation to try to hold it to a small increase, and my hope is that we could continue to do small increases. Second. 
I second, second that I motion. Second the motion if you <laughs> so desire to have one. <laughs> All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Any opposed? No. There we go. There you go. And Tom missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I will hear. Thank you now. very much, Gail. You make it understand understandable for us. And have fun playing with all those scenarios. I can imagine you sitting there saying, "What happens if I do this?" Well, I I'm just well, wondering me crazy. if you were count at as, <laughs> speaking to Councilman Thomas, wouldn't you like to see a couple different ones? Uh, models. Okay. Yeah, different yeah, models. Assumptions yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and assumptions and stuff when they show it to you. Okay. Take that into consideration and carry that forward. I think that's the new rate. Uh, Have fun playing that um, now, and then we go. To... So, for 2,000 gallons, Gail thinks she's calculated that for you. I had to do it on paper. So, <laughs> okay, <here laughs> so we will bear with her. She did it on paper. The current rate is fifty dollars and seven cent for 2,000 gallons on a five eight. That's meter. water. Fifty dollars. How much? Fifty dollars and seven cent. For water and sewer. For water and sewer. Not the that trash, is, not the trash. not the other fees. Oh that is yeah. correct. You yeah. want the other $20 I'm charged. That's what? correct. The, <laughs> the other $20 that is included in your t utility bill is 15 for sanitation service and, and five. 5 for stormwater. Okay. For a total bill of $70.07. Seven cents. That's what you're paying. That's what I pay, yeah. Okay. You're under the... $61. Am I under the is three, that three eight percent meter under rate? Five eight. Five eight. Under three percent. So what we showed you at the three percent that you ask about would take your base bill to fifty one dollars and fifty nine cents. So about a dollar up. So about a dollar up. Dollar a dollar and fifty cent up. Fifty two cents. This water the water changes a little bit and the sewer rate changes a little bit. Okay. About half of that. I don't see where anybody would be complaining about, a, well, actually, about a dollar and some cent there. You know, that's uh, about five cigarettes or so. <laughs> that's the rate they're going. A quarter of a gallon of gas or something, you know. Uh, it's a pack of gum. I think that's from last night. <laughs> I'm all for that. I'm okay. Glad. Yes, sir. Yes, no. ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay, our next agenda item is old business. Does anybody have any old business? And I think the only thing I'll point out to you um, is the significant events yeah. in your water and sewer report. Yeah. Uh, April was a rough month to us. Uh, we had a valve on our 24-inch wall water main that feeds the pipe. Um, we had problems with it, and we had to replace it. Um, Actually, utilities maintenance did a very good job of getting us our plant back up and running with a temporary fix until we could get the parts here. Um, and it actually, that temporary fix held us um, through almost the entire month of April, I believe. Yes. And then we had um, with the, the heavy rainfall uh, that we had um, on, uh, I think that was April 24th. We saw, parts of the city saw over five <coughs> inches of rain. Um, we did have one sanitary sewer overflow. What happened is we had a pump station on um, University Drive. It's actually University Pump Station. Went into high alarm and into double pump, which means that both pumps ended up pumping. And it overwhelmed the downstream system and bubbled out a manhole and ran into a storm drain. But based on... The heavy rainfall and the, the duration of the spill, basically it took one of our crew getting over there and shutting down one of the pumps to stop it. Um, there was no sampling required so or anything. Deleted. And then um, we had uh, probably the largest thing that happened to us is we had a failure of the um, transfer switch at the main pump station. That switch was um, over 20 years old. It was installed in the late 90s. And um, basically metal fatigue, it broke in the commercial power position, which means that the backup generator cannot run the station. The good thing is it's stuck in commercial power and not in generator power or in between. Um, 
And our original estimate based on somebody coming out and doing a brief look was about $50,000. I can tell you that um, as we've had that assessed and we've had more people come out and look, that is way low. So we don't know what the end result of that will be yet. Um, I, that will come out when we send you an update. Um, but I can tell you that it's more than likely double that Have um, you and maybe more. You had said it would be eight weeks lead time to get that fixed. Yes, and it's not a, we are trying to get a switch, basically the switch that's, that is there that was installed with the station when it was constructed was a custom built transfer switch because it's so large. Mm -hmm. um, the um, switch that we're trying to get still has to be custom built mm -hmm. uh, because they don't keep anything that size because they're used so infrequently on a shelf. So, so we can't even order it. Um, what we have to do is order it. The plan, what we're trying to do is make sure that even though they have to essentially build it for us, that it uses um, ready ava readily available components that can be easily maintenance. They don't have to actually manufacture so, the components themselves. Correct. That's okay. what we're hoping. Um, so there are some, you know, originally we thought it was going to be as simple as going in and just finding the size switch we need to go in place. And basically with the technology that's there, um, that is not the case. So it is going to be significantly larger than originally expected. Along with that, we also expect that it may have more downtime. Originally, we thought we could do this in a day, and we're not sure that we can do this in a day. So are you going to require so, everybody in Jacksonville to cross their legs for 48 hours? <laughs> so yeah, what we have in place, here. because yeah. obviously we can't function with no emergency backup, um, we do have two pumps in place that we are renting because we do not have anything large enough to handle the station. Um, they will get us by in an emergency, um, but I can tell you that we had to put the station on bypass when we did the expansion of LTS, and I think we had a total of five pumps out there for the duration of that project. Now, that was several, I think it was several months, and one of those pumps was a backup. Um, so... Be, this is a shorter duration project. You know, we still think, we don't think we can do it in a day, but we're thinking a day or two. Um, what we would do is strategically plan this when we have dry weather so that we don't have that to worry about. So we think that the two pumps we have there may be sufficient for even when we have to take the station offline. But I want um, it there just in case. But they are there. Now, I will say that <laughs> they don't just start up automatically. So if we lose power to the station, our crews will have to go there. They will have to remove um, the uh, grinder pump that's in place. They'll have to pull it out and drop two 12-inch hoses down into the wet well and, and then crank the pumps up. So it will take time. Um, we have the pumps there. They're staged. They're already hard piped into our force main. But we would have to drop the, the hoses, and the hoses are so large that it's. I'm, when I say drop them in, it's not like I'm going to walk out there and say, "There you go." They have to be moved with a backhoe, so we have a backhoe staged also. So if we have to go out there in the middle of the night, now the good thing is a three-man crew can do this, and we do have quick response, and we have um, we do have holding time in the main pump station. So. What will we do? What we would do is go out there in the events of a, a major storm, and look at you know if we lose power, we would work with the power company to decide about how long they think before we'd be back in power, and if it's just an hour or two, we probably would just man the station and make sure that in an hour and two we do have. Because that um, happened not long ago in that area, we lost power. That's correct, and that's when it happened. For, yeah, for several hours. So mm -hmm. it, we we would have sufficient holding time under that scenario. What now, if they say it's going to be five, six, seven, eight hours, mm -hmm. then we're going to go ahead and set up the bypass pumps and mm -hmm. switch over. So, so is this sort of like your your worst nightmare, and why you always wanted to have that second line going over to the land treatment <laughs> site? No. no. I, I will say it's not my worst nightmare, but it's it is getting, not a good one. It's getting close. <laughs> the, okay. the, wor the worst nightmare would be that something happens 
to the force main itself. My that would be my worst nightmare. You said it's stuck on commercial power. What happens if something like that now, where we lose power, happens before this thing is fixed? Yeah, we'll just, we won't have power. And that's where we do have those bypass pumps staged. So we, we will have, we have the ability to very quickly, and I think, I don't remember, if, I don't know if you remember, but I think it was a half an hour, an hour, it, it would take to switch over and get those up and running. Is that what zapped it that night of that storm when we lost power over here? That's when, that's when we found the problem. Oh, okay. So, gotcha. it, and it had been, we, we exercise the generator four times a month to mm -hmm. make sure that it will operate. Mm -hmm. And one of those four times a month, we put it under load, which means we run the whole state. We switch it from commercial power, put the whole station on generator, mm -hmm. and we run it for, I don't remember if it's six or eight hours, to make sure that everything functions just like it should right. in the case of an emergency. So it had operated fine. Now, it was not operating automatically, which is the desired, but we were not having problems with operating it manually. Mm -hmm. But, again, the good thing is when it did fail, it failed in commercial power mode, not in generator mode, to where we had to get it out of generator mode somehow. This also didn't fail in the middle of a hurricane or something. That's exactly. Another blessing. Okay. Exactly. Careful, June is coming up. I know. Any other old business? Everybody good? Okay. Any new business? I have one thing. Go for it, Wally. Um, I would like to introduce, for those of you that may not know, I don't know how anybody doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, yeah. you don't know Just Mr. Carrie Terrell. Yep. Mr. Carrie Terrell has been promoted to the um, Assistant Public Services mm -hmm. Director. You know, he was formerly the Sanitation Superintendent. Yep. Um, and uh, he will be focused primarily uh, on public works, which is primarily streets, stormwater, um, facilities maintenance and sanitation. So he will, he will be <laughs> over those daily operations and then um, he will be involved on the water and sewer side also um, in our discussions and those kind of things. But right now it allows him to focus on the public works which gives me a little more time to focus on some of the utilities things that we have going on. So is he the person I need to ask about when the seal is going to be replaced on the <laughs> outlet opening whatever it valve on um, Bryn Mawr, right there by Western. <laughs> He's going, no, I'm not the person. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even sure. Are you, are you he, talking he, about this drains to the New River? No, I'm talking um, about the water line. The, the Pete mentioned, I had asked him about that, and he said they were waiting for a new seal, and that was a couple no, of months would be, ago. That would be me or Gavin. That would be you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not sure that I know about it, but... If you'll, if you'll it, give it to me, I'll It's I'll been check seeping for months now. Okay. Waterline. Just out of curiosity, is this a change you're going to make and Pete's not going to be replaced, or is this an addition because of the growth? No, this would be an addition. Okay. So, so we, we still, at some point, plan to have a street superintendent because mm -hmm. Shawnee retired. And right. And a um, utilities maintenance superintendent over utilities maintenance. Right now, Gavin is handling utilities maintenance. Right. He's doing a, a good job. Mm -hmm. um, and Fred Williams is handling streets. Okay. He's doing a good job also. All right. So we have both of those have been with our organization. I think Gavin's been here eight years now, and um, Fred's been here over 20 or 25. Carrie, how long so, have you been here now? 26 years. Yeah. 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 You've been here a long time. Okay. <laughs> well, you, counting, you right? have fun with the new job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll learn a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> I bet you will. Yep, so we are. I plan on them teaching me a lot. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Uh, what you got? The only thing you all have got it here, the planning and permitting update. We did not have, of course, a meeting last month due to the the uh, appreciation dinner for mm -hmm. the but <clears throat> the Jacksonville VA outpatient clinic one more parking area mm -hmm. and Gateway Marketplace which is out there we're across from Cheddar you know by going into uh, the commons there. right where the expressway ends yeah mm -hmm. uh, they're going to put in a 165,000 square foot shopping center with another grocery store 
I have not That's heard of this one, but I haven't heard of it, but uh, then there's going to be some other open spaces for other. I thought you had said at the last meeting that Publix was further down Western Extension. No, it's right near the... Uh, right there across from Cheddar's where that expressway ends, coming out of the road from the rec center. Yeah. No, it's further over from that. Yeah. Got a sign yeah, up there now. Yeah, yeah it's further. It's closer to yeah. uh, Jersey Mike's Jersey and Massage and Meek. Oh, that little shopping center that just Excuse went me. in. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So it's not going to be right on that entrance into the Commons. No, but it, there will be a new road that connects Good. from. That's Gateway North. Uh huh. There will be a new commercial road that connects from Gateway North over to that public shopping center. So there'll be access right there. Okay, because okay. I know like on that, and that was one, the reason I'm asking the question is I know that shopping center where Massage Envy is, they do not have a direct access because there's a big ditch there. That's you correct. have to go like to the light and through Longhorn Shopping Center, Longhorn's parking lot to get to them. And that's why I was wondering because of that ditch. Mm. Is there going to be access from that Publix directly onto Western? It will be into, it won't be into a driveway, it would be an access road into that. And I think it's supposed to be public. So it would be kind of like Gateway South um, near Chick-fil-A and it goes up between Target and Coles. Mm -hmm. It would be an access road. It would be an actual road. You're having them do all like the street curbs and then frontage roads to get back and forth in the shopping centers? Yes. Is that the way you're having them all designed? Yes. Thank you. I'm just, I'm picturing that commons the way that it is in the morning when everybody's coming out to work in that shopping center now there. I thought, I thought the freeway was supposed to come out, go right on across there and cut back and come back it down is, on Drummond um, 17. The, they're in the long range transportation plan, the Jacksonville Parkway would be extended mm -hmm. across and it would actually go, you know, down Gateway North and curve into and across behind this project. So this will be in front of that. Where are they going to take the expressway? Back behind that Publix to the left? Yes. Away from the schools? Away from the schools. And where would it end? It would go all the way to Ramsey Road. All the way to Ramsey. Yes, ma'am. Interesting. How many more grocery stores do we need? I don't go shopping that much, for God's sake. Wally, have you heard anything from <coughs> Thomas or James on the last two meetings? You did. Well, this one and the one we summer. had a canceled one, and then they weren't at the one before that, are they? Mr. Thomas, um, uh, sorry, Mr. Nickel, um, he typically, let, he, you know, he travels for work. Oh, I And he know. typically he, lets me know when he's not going to be here. He may have done that, I just don't recall. And I do not know about Mr. Turner. The last time he missed um, was because his wife was ill. No. So I'm, I haven't. Um, he did. Mr. Turner did attend um, Pete's going away party. Um, and, I, and his wife was ill at that time still. And his son was in helping him. So, you know, I, I haven't spoken to him recently. I haven't spoken to either one of them. So that I just wondered if something happened. You know, the, have we got any more? So Thank you very nice. Are, it, 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 we're, we're short. We'll what, talk about three? this after the meeting. Yep. <laughs> Let me call and talk to Carmen again and see if maybe he won't come back or. Okay. Or hopefully see if there's some fresh blood out there that is interested <laughs> in joining us. Do they have, still have the thing on the city website where if you're interested in the committees yes. that there's an application or, or somebody to get in touch with? The talent Inc. Application, is, that what they still call it? Is, is there a shadowing thing still? I where, don't know if there's a shadowing. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a shadow positions. Okay, anything else? Well, I'll make a motion when you're done. A second. All in Somebody favor? Aye. Aye. You're waiting for that one. Well, <laughs> Thank you.